with that, I'm going to I'm going to turn over to um, turn over the floor to uh, Dennis Kleinman from uh, Great Florida Bank. Great Florida Bank is a Coral Gables institution based over in Alhambra. Dennis is going to talk about really the nuance. How do I go ahead? How do I secure financing? What do I need to do? What should I keep in mind? What are the pitfalls? What do I what, you know? How, how can I avoid some of the problems, some of the headaches that ultimately are out there? Let's talk about real estate. You really need to buy a home now if you don't own one. And if you do own one, you really need to trade up because you'll never have a better opportunity. The creation of wealth in this country historically has been from real estate. It's been the case, it will continue to be the case. Housing affordability has never been better. It's the perfect storm of low interest rates, low selling prices, adequate supply of, of money, and government stimulus. According to the National Association of Realtors Housing Affordability Index, the average national qualifying income for a home in 2006 was $54,000. So in 2006, you needed about $54,000 in income to qualify for a home. In April of this year, the average income required to purchase a home is $34,080. <coughs> That's a decrease of 37% in the amount of income you need to qualify for a home in less than four years. The Housing Affordability Index itself, uh, is take, it takes into account incomes, housing prices, and interest rates, and that's up 66% from 2006. So you have a 66% greater chance to qualify for a home today than you did just three years ago. And as anyone who follows Peter and, and kind of workers will uh, is aware there's a lot of product out there. Uh, but sale prices in select markets have been firming, as Peter said. And if you don't act now, you may not be able to catch the best buys. Now is the best time ever to purchase a property. What about government stimulus? We, the government has taken over some of the institutions that we've held in the mortgage business quite high, in quite high esteem, and that's Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Who are Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac? Uh, they are organizations that allow banks like Great Florida Bank to continue to produce mortgages by buying the loans we produce securitizing them and selling them in the secondary market. How does that help us? That gives us the money back to lend to other buyers. If we had to keep a 30-year mortgage in our own portfolio, we'd run out of money real quickly. So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac greases the skid. Also, FHA. FHA is the Federal Housing Administration. And we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about FHA today because FHA long ago was a poor stepsister to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. That's no longer the case. And we're gonna tell you a little bit about why it's the preferred way to go today in mortgage lending. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac provided us with uniform standards, underwriting guidelines for originating loans, uniform documentation. That's what provided for the securitization of mortgages. The same thing applies to FHA. FHA loans, though, are more practical for first-time home buyers. Buyers. How many people in this room who are first-time home buyers have the ability to put down 20%? Anybody? We have a depository relationship that we can establish with you right away. Uh, <laughs> most first-time home buyers have less than 20% to put down, but they're dying to get into their property, and they really need to get into that property, and they can do so with, with FHA. With FHA, you can put down as little as 3.5%. And until April 30th of this year, Uncle Sam is going to contribute up to $8,000 to qualified buyers of single family homes. If they're a first time home buyer, but you don't need to necessarily be a first time home buyer. If you have not owned a home in the past three years, you also qualify if the income requirements are correct for the $8,000. If you want more information on the uh, first-time home buyer's credit, we'll be happy to provide that for you. FHA loans are available only to owner-occupied properties. So if you're an investor thinking about buying something for 3.5% down, I'm sorry, it's not gonna work for you. But you can buy through FHA a single-family home, a condominium, anything that's two to four family also, as long as you own or occupy. Why bother with conventional financing? Why doesn't Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac go out of business if FHA is so great? Well, not all projects that are out there, condominium projects, are FHA approved or approvable. And I think Grant's gonna talk a little bit later about 
how much more difficult that's going to be. And not everybody has 20% to put down. So it is good to be able to know and understand FHA loans because they're much more beneficial to you as a first time home buyers. First time home buyers can buy properties up to $439,000. That's the FHA maximum loan amount is $423,750. So you can, by the way, FHA loans are not just for first time home buyers. You, anybody can get an FHA loan. But we're concentrating on first time home buyers here today. So with a maximum loan amount of $423,750, you can control a property in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, or Palm Beach County that can sell for $439,000. The down payment requirement with FHA is just 3.5%. Let me give you a quick example. If you have a property that you're looking at that's $200,000, I use this example because I'm not very smart, it's easy to on the map. $200,000, 3.5% down is how much? $7,000, right? Okay. You can get with FHA somebody to gift you that entire $7,000 who is eligible, an eligible donor. Could be your mother, could be your aunt, could be your father. You can get 100% of this gifted to you. In addition, you can have the seller pay up to 6% of your closing costs with an FHA loan. So on our hypothetical $200,000 property, you can go in with no money of your own. But what about the stimulus, the $8,000? You can get that $8,000 back when you file your tax returns and put it in the bank. Or you can pay back your Aunt Tilly or Uncle Joe, whoever loaned you the, the $7,000 to begin with. You see the value in FHA mortgage? <coughs> in addition, FHA mortgages have underwriting guidelines that are a little less stringent than, than uh, Fannie Mae. Uh, they're not a lay down. You still have to verify income. You have to verify assets. And we're going to talk about the requirements in a little while of what you need to get a mortgage. You can develop non-traditional credit. If everyone's been telling you, don't, don't uh, open up a charge account because it's going to affect your credit score and you don't have a sufficient number of credit lines, you can use your FP&L bill, you can use your insurance bill to establish credit. Uh, credit scores for FHA loans at our company are as low as 620. And you may have heard that you can't get a loan with a 620 score, you can. And the pricing for that is not any different than if you had a 720 credit score. It's no different with an FHA loan. Let's talk about the mortgage process for a minute. If you've never gotten a mortgage, it seems a little daunting. But let me tell you that there's really only four basic components to every mortgage transaction. Income, how much you make to qualify. Assets, how much cash you have to put down. Credit, how good is your credit score or what is your credit develop, composed of. And the property. So we're gonna encourage you before you leave today take care of the first three. Get pre-qualified with a lender. Show them your income, show them your assets. Let them pull your credit. And then you can look for number four, that property. And that's what Peter was alluding to before. 